of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. My name's Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight we are talking some George P. Wilbur. Rest in peace, George P. Wilbur, the actor and stuntman who played Michael Myers in Halloween 4 and Halloween 6, passed away last week at the age of 81. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! We are live on our way to episode 200. Not long now, not long now. 179. George P. Wilbur. Tony Michael, how are you? Good. If I'm quiet, it's because when you play the music intro, I, you, you cut in and out like it's a bad reception on a cell phone call. So I have absolutely no idea what you just said. That's all right. <laughs> no worries at all. It must be. It, it doesn't go out that way to the viewers, which is the most important thing. I no, guess. it's just so, it's, no. it's what I'm hearing. It's, I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I don't know what he's saying. It could, okay. it could be the Zoom <laughs> connection. Who knows? It could be that. Who, Who, knows? Knows? Who knows? You never know. Now, uh, before we uh, get started into talking about George and celebrating. Uh, I had put this up on my social media, uh, the community section here on uh, YouTube, on my Facebook uh, page, Many Things Dave McRae. I had people that were interested, people that were like, yes, let's do it. And people backed out at the last minute. So I'm going to just put it out there here on the channel, uh, on the show today. If anybody wants it, I'm putting it, it's for sale. It's a package that I have in this box. Now it's already wrapped. It is, it is wrapped, this box right here. It's wrapped and ready to go. So in this box, in this box is uh, the, um, uh, is it Shout Factory or Scream Factory? I forget which one it is now. The Halloween um, uh, 6, 7, and 8. So Halloween 6, Halloween um, H2O and Halloween Resurrection 4K Blu-ray Ultra HD that you know that little three um, movie box set they did it's in here and it hasn't been opened it has not been opened it's in this it's in this box also in this box is an 8 by 10 a, a, an 8 by 10 autographed photo uh, from Nick Castle and Nancy Loomis. So you have Nick Castle and you have Nancy Loomis as well, of course, who played Annie. And it's the photograph where Nick's, you know, in the background in the mask and Annie's on the phone. Pa, what are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. So it's that, that is in here. Autographed from Nick Castle and Nancy Loomis. That's in here as well. Also in here is It's Me, Billy, Chapter 1 on Blu-ray. Not opened. I'm not going to give you I'm not going to give you mine. It's unopened. It is in here. It's me, Billy, men's t-shirt. Medium. It's a medium, though. So if you're, you know, but whatever. <laughs> Hang it on the wall. Uh, wear it as a pair of shorts or something. I don't know. It's it's in here as well. Also in here is uh, the 40th 
from uh, Birth Movies Death. Birth, Birth Movies Death had a 40th anniversary special edition magazine when Halloween 2018 was coming out. And it's all about John Carpenter and Halloween and the legacy and Carpenter's movies and everything. It's, it's in mint condition. That's in here. Also in here is Halloween 2018 on CD. Yeah, I know, CD, what the fuck is that? But hey, it's cool. It's, it, it's, it's the new VHS. It's, well, I guess vinyl is kind of the new VHS, but whatever. It's in here as well. Now, it has been opened, but it's never been played. It's never been played. The disc is immaculate. It's never been played. That is in here as well. And I don't think I'm missing anything else. All for $375 US, shipping included, shipping included to the continental United States. Now, if it's overseas, depending on where you are, uh, might have to add maybe 10 bucks, you know, depends on where you are. Um, but $375 all in. Most of our viewers are from the States. Uh, so that's where the vast majority of the interest will probably be. Again, the Halloween 6 H2O Resurrection Scream Shout Factory, whatever it is, uh, the three movie box set, 4K, Blu-ray, it's in here. It's Me Billy on Blu-ray, it's in here. Men's Medium, It's Me Billy t-shirt, uh, the um, autographed photo, 8x10, Nick Castle, Nancy Loomis, the Halloween 18 CD, and the Birth Movies Death Special Edition 40th Anniversary. It is in here. If you would like this, send me a DM Okay, a direct message, a private message on my Facebook page, Many Things Dave McRae. Not my personal Facebook page, so don't go to Facebook and search Dave McRae because you'll come up to my personal Facebook page and I don't answer really anything there. Uh, go to the Many Things Dave McRae. The link is in the description. So just go to the description, click on the link, send me a DM there. If you want this, I will get it to you tomorrow. Well, I'll get it off to you tomorrow. You know, you're not going to have it tomorrow, but I'll get it off to you first thing in the morning. It's a hell of a deal. A lot of good fucking shit in here. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Okay. All right, Tony, <laughs> now that yes, some house cleaning is out of the way, George P. Go. Wilbur, George P. Wilbur. Yeah. <sighs> Sucks to do a uh, show like this, you know? Um, mm. Well, you know what? I mean, look, I mean, George, you know, he's, he, he, he lived a good life. He was 81. It's not a situation where it's like gone too soon. Well, it's not that it's just, yeah. it's coming to the re realization of like where we're at now in our right. lives, you know what I mean? And, 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 and realizing your mortality and, you know, this was for me and I'm sure many can, you know, relate to this. I mean, this was my childhood. This was my first introduction to Michael Myers. He yeah, was take the, the floor. First Michael Myers. Take the floor he and tell us that story. He, he was the first one I saw, not on screen, obviously. I was at a, uh, I had just moved to the, the town of Enfield um, and really was just getting to know people. And um, a girl had invited me who was a classmate of mine to her birthday party, house party. And, uh, you know, boy, girl party it was my first boy, girl party and, and whatnot. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, you know, Sa you play like saved seven, by the bell. Yeah. Right. You play like seven <laughs> minutes in heaven, spin the bottle. Right, well, right, we didn't do right. spin the, we didn't do spin the bottle, but we, right. they, they did something with a, the name drawing of the names and you go in the whatever anyways. Uh, but it was a basement party, you know, and all that stuff like that. Well, I go upstairs and I'm like, I, I kind of knew who her brother was, but didn't because right. he was a couple years older than us, you know, like he, he ain't gonna hang out with a fifth grader, you know, right. and, and whatnot. And but I see him and his buddy watching this movie. No fucking clue what the hell they're watching. Right. But I can tell it's a horror movie. Now, at that point, I'm already into like Freddy. I knew who Freddy was. I'd seen Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, seen plenty of those. Uh, but never, never had seen a Halloween movie. Didn't even know this universe existed. Um you know, and, uh, you know, I just finally I was like, OK, that's it. I want to sit down and watch this movie. And I when I finally gave up on the party and focused on the movie, I think it was right around um, when Danielle was running out of the school and a very powerful scene that she did as a kid. And she's getting taunted by the kids and, and, and whatnot. Um, I think the first scene when I walked past, by the way, not to backtrack, but the backtrack, the first scene I walked past the, to go to the bathroom was the ambulance and Michael putting the thumb through the forehead. So that's a great way. That's a hell of a way to kick off. Like, it's what's great. this? Especially, you know, especially like, at that age, because you're so impressionable. 
Oh yeah, and you, yeah. you know you're just discovering horror movies, and I knew who Leatherface was because I had a copy of Chainsaw Massacre as well too. So I knew like, I, but I had no idea what the hell this was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know what the hell I'm watching. All I just saw was a dude getting impaled with a thumb through the forehead. So and I thought that was cool. Fucked up kid I was. Um, it's all right. So <laughs> sat down and just I don't know, man. I just, it changed my life. It changed my world. Like it just I became obsessed with Halloween and Michael Myers. Uh, asked her brother if I could borrow the tape so I can make a copy for those who don't know back in the day. We had two VCRs in our house. My mom had one and then the kids, me, my brother and sister shared one. And so what we did was what we would do is we would take you know, one VCR, put it on top of my mom's and connect them together and record and burn yourself. That's how you would make your own copy legally. Right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> totally. You do that. Right. Exactly. Totally. totally. And uh, yeah, man, just like watched it. Like it was a religion, man. I played that. T- I, I, I don't even know how many times I watched Halloween for, uh, in those first four years, you know, as it, you know, from 1989 to 93, because remember, we didn't have access. And we've shared that story many times. You know, I didn't have access to uh, the original Halloween and my video rental stores. They only carried Halloween two, Halloween five. Some might have carried season of the witch, but for the most part, no, um, that was one you couldn't see. And that was it. So it was really two, four and five. And the only thing I knew about with Halloween, the original, was whatever was shown in the beginning of Halloween 2. So that's all I knew for about four years. Um, But man, like, and, you know, when me and my brother were little kids, we would reenact uh, scenes. Like my mom, for a brief period, she borrowed my grandfather's pickup truck. So, you know, he got into the pickup truck and I had, you know, the the same mask that you've had, the Don Post old school mask that my uncle gave me. And they weren't even called nothing. Michael Myers masks. They were called <laughs> no, like the mask or something like the that. The mask or some shit. Yeah. So I put that on and he pretend like he's driving the truck and I try to, you know, grab him and then tumble him off the truck. And our house was so short that... um what I would do sometimes is I would, we had this, I don't know what you would call it in the front part of where our stoop was, but like a railing post or something that I could actually climb up and get onto the roof of my house. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'd pretend to do the roof rooftop scene. Of course, nobody else was up there with me. It was just me by myself Yes, uh, and whatnot. But you know, when you're 10 <laughs> years old, your imagination course, goes wild, right? That, that's, that's when you can do it's like it's me fantasy. It's, it's like, pre- me in the top hat with the ballpoint pens taped to a winter glove. In my mind, I was Freddie, <laughs> you know? There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but man, just it, it left just such a huge impression on me. And look, I'm not, I'm not here to get into it with the, anybody in the chat room tonight, comparing Nick Castle to George. No, Hugo it's not about that. Halloween to Halloween four. But I, and I've said this many times, Halloween four will for, ever be my favorite in the franchise yeah. when it comes to that sentimental attachment yep, yep um it was it was how i was introduced to the franchise um that that's never going to change uh you know my love for that movie and uh just great memories just watching it as a kid and like i i swear i i probably broke our vcr because i just would watch that movie on we couldn't get enough of it even my brother you know he got into it as well too and you know we'd be just sitting there watching it Every other day of the week, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, and then, and then when, I, when I say every other day, I mean I literally mean like every other day we'd be popping in Halloween right. four and right. watching Halloween four. Um, and eventually, you know, I, you know, I got a paper route and was earning some money. We I'd go up our we had a video rental place not too far from where we lived because we lived on the Connecticut Massachusetts borderline, and the the rental place was in Massachusetts, so we would walk up there and mm-hmm. we'd go rent Halloween five and Halloween two and and whatnot, and do like a Halloween marathon for the weekend, and 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 we did that shit all the time. You know, right. what I mean, it wasn't like you know once in a week, like every other weekend. You know, we'd get other horror movies as well too, like the yeah. child's play movies that were out in the nightmare on Elm streets and Friday, the 13th, whatever, again, with Friday too, that was the same. We had the same problems with copyrights. Cause um, you, some of them didn't carry the original Friday. Some of them right. didn't even carry part two. Right. Uh, some of them didn't carry, you know what? It was just, it was just how it was back in the day. It was yeah. not, it was the accessibility to these movies. Like we are now, like, like for those of you who are younger, I mean, you don't understand when I say the struggle was real back in the day, the struggle was fucking real. Mm-hmm. Like, 
it was just how it was with these video rental places, especially if you were a mom and pop one. Then when Blockbuster came around, that changed the whole game and they had everything, you know, and you could get everything. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, Halloween 4 goes uh, specifically, I mean, I know we'll talk about 6 in a, in a little bit, but 4 specifically, um, you know, two of my favorite moments, you know, and, and if I were to put together top 10, top 15, whatever, moments in this franchise will always be the rooftop scene when michael is you know closing in on jamie and rachel and the truck scene you know when yeah. he finally gets on the truck now as an adult i'm like they could have thought that out through the idea is good the execution is awesome with this music playing and he's hanging mm -hmm. off the truck and rachel's driving i love it i just think as an adult, they could have thought that out a little bit more for him to get to that point. Right. Uh, maybe right. nobody, maybe nobody's in the truck and Rachel's escaped from the school and she hot wired a truck or so, you know, whatever. Right. Um, you know, I, I'm not here to rewrite the scene, but the scene itself, when it finally gets to the moment of, you know, George is on, and I think it's George who does the stunt, you know, and he's on the truck. I would imagine. So. Um, it's such a, it's such an incredible scene. Um, you know, and then there's obviously little things that he did himself. You know, he didn't really copy what Nick or Dick did before, you know, in Halloween and Halloween 2. He made Michael himself. I mean, yeah, we can pick on the mask. Um, that mask actually has grown on me. Uh, you know, I really liked it as a kid. Then as an adult, as a young adult, I was like, hmm. But now as I'm getting older, I'm like, it really isn't that bad of a mask, you know, because considering that the continuity of the story that's being told, Michael wouldn't have the same mask Correct. too, because it's, it's burnt. Correct. So if he's, if he, it, 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 it just happens to be a mask that looks very similar to him and that's mm -hmm. why he chose it. It makes sense. I mean, yes, they could have maybe added a, you know, some shadowing to it just to give it some facial features and not so pale white. And, you know, you didn't need to go the shoulder pads route, but I understand what they were doing. Jason was big. He was bulky. So they were trying to create that type of Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought overall what George did, um, you know, at certain times in the movie, I thought it was really, really good. In fact, you know, we talked about it before he, when he's got the bandage on that would have been an interesting look to go with as well too just leaving michael in the bandage i agree um you know without needing a mask you know the bandages are his mask because his face is fucked up from the fire right um that would have been really interesting um but he's a you know look if i were to rank my michaels i'd probably go nick dick <laughs> eh. <laughs> George James, George James, it's kind of like a back and forth between the two. Right. Um, and, you know, he's the first Michael to play Michael twice, you right. know, before Tyler, before Tyler Main did in Rob Zombie's Halloween's and um, uh, James Jude Courtney did in the, the last trilogy here. So he was the first Michael to come back and reprise the role in six. Um, and he had some moments in six that I thought were really good as well, too. Yeah, he was a little bit you know, thicker, you know, obviously been uh, bulking up and taking that creatine and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, or just but, eating uh, too much. For, yeah. <laughs> Michael was hungry. He was Michael, hungry. Mike, Michael, he was hungry. He was maybe hungry. he got hungry. Maybe he got hungry. Right? Maybe, maybe he got hungry. Does. But, um, you know, and, and, and if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but it might be the Halloween 4, maybe the first time where you actually see Loomis just talk to Michael in that restaurant scene um, because he doesn't talk to him in the original he shoots him when he when he finally catches him at the end um, and then in part two basically he's running away from Michael in the hospital so in four you, you kind of see that doctor patient relationship ish you know and michael just standing there and loomis is begging him not right. to go to haddonfield so that's really the first time you're seeing that yeah um, unless you know unless of course you you know because the but what about the tv oh the tv cut? i get the tv cut right when michael yeah. is in the, the bathroom the okay let's say when he's an world. adult <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yes yes when he's yeah. an adult and he's escaped mm -hmm. from it mm -hmm. all, you know yeah um, yep, that's yep. the first 
that that restaurant scene is the first time. Yeah, because you see in, at the end of Halloween too, when he's like, "It's time, Michael." That that, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Right. Not, I mean, yeah, you. No, but he's not no, having a conversation with him. No, not like he did in four, where he's Correct. like, "Please don't go back there." Correct. You know, right. if you get, if you want another victim, take me. You that's know, right. yeah. and whatnot. Um, that's the other thing, man. I mean, I can quote that movie. I've seen it so much. I can quote of course. it. At yeah, this yeah, point. yeah. I could probably, we could probably run through the whole movie right now from start yeah. to finish. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but what about you? I mean, was four the first Halloween movie for you or no? No, it wasn't the first Halloween movie I ever saw. The first Halloween movie I ever saw would have been one or two. Um, cause, it, cause this would have been like, you know, 84, 85 when there only were three Halloween movies. And it was my brother, Neil, that introduced me to, uh, Halloween, um, one and two. And I've said this many times that my brother, Neil, uh, his favorite was Halloween out of all of them, uh, out of, you know, Michael and Freddie and Jason, all that, because Halloween was the first horror movie he ever watched that didn't give him nightmares. That's what he says. So he introduced me to it and I fell in love with it. I've never had a, a, a nightmare about any horror movie, Freddie, JD, whatever. Um, so th that wasn't like that for me, but I was a young, impressionable kid. This is, you know, I'm, I'm like five, it's like 1984, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I got into that. And then in terms of Halloween 4, when I think of Halloween 4, like, you know, back in 1988, we would have been nine. And right. I remember my brother, Neil, who's nine years older than me, uh, his birthday is October 29th. And so he turned 18 that year in 1988, and he was old enough to get in to see a, you know, a rated R movie. And he was going with his brother, his brother, his uh, best friend, Roy. And I remember, I, I don't, I don't remember anything before this. I don't remember everything, you know, anything after this. I just remember Neil being in the kitchen and he was excited. He was all pumped. He was excited. And I remember him going, yeah, I'm going to see Halloween four, the return of Michael Meyer. Like he was pumping his fist like that. And I remember him like, I just, I remember, I have a vivid memory of him doing that. I don't know mm -hmm. what he said when he came back. I don't know what he said to me when he came back. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember. It was so long ago. It was 30 years ago. And so, um, but so when I first saw it would have been probably in like 89 or 90, you know, when you could rent it on VHS and things like that. And, and I think I liked the movie well enough. I remember not liking the mask, but I was heavily influenced by my brother, Neil as well. The mask sucks. You know what right. I mean? It's, it's not the right mask. But I was also old enough. I mean, I'm like, you know, 10 or 11. I'm old enough to, to know that, well, yeah, that mask isn't the right mask. Funny enough, the mask has not in every shot, <laughs> not in every shot. There's a couple of shots where he looks, eh, you know, and I say this with all due respect. There's one shot where I think he just kind of looks you know, a little bit like, well, I'm not going to say that anyway. Um, but the, the four mask has grown on me over the years. Um, mm. I think, and I think there are some, yes, if we compare it to the original, then nah, I mean, you know, but, uh, the mask has grown on me over the years and it's actually, I don't think it's, it's, I, I don't think it's the worst. I would put the H2O mask below it. I would, I would, I would put the, yeah. uh, the resurrection mask below it. Uh, and I think I might've done a ranking of the masks and maybe my ranking here is off, but you know, in, in terms of how I felt then, but, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I'd you put know, it above six of, or not. I, there's something about the four mask that has grown on me in ways that the other film's masks just never have. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what that is yet. Um, I can think about that more and maybe I'll figure it out. I, I don't think it's a great mask, but, it, but it's grown on me. There's moments where you're like, you know what? This works. It looks creepy in that moment. And yeah, all the masks have that, but there's something about the four masks that just, maybe because it, maybe because there is, even though it's they there was a debacle there too maybe there's because it was i believe it was a shatner mask if i'm not mistaken it just didn't have the eye holes cut out well there's a couple of shots where the eye holes are not cut out and you know what it it, it, it wasn't yeah, treated yeah. the same way you know um i could be off on that maybe it's not a shot uh shatter but anyway 
Uh, the you know, pink- I remember the 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 TV spots. Yeah, that's a crazy thing. Like I when I've seen the like the TV ads ten years ago, mm-hmm. he changed the face. Of all, remember, you know, like that whole the scroll, and then it cuts into the 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 cut. Like I remember. I don't know if I was at my, I, I think I was at my grandparents' house and like, cause like my mm. father would pick us up on the weekends and uh, I just vividly remember we're watching a football game at my grandmother's house. Like we would be doing on a Sunday and just having family dinner. Of course. And I just, I have this memory of just seeing the ad, you know, and, and seeing the, not knowing what it is, but I just, when I've seen the, the, you know, like when you ever see something, you're like, I swear I've seen this before, you know, like when, when you're, you know, when you're younger or some shit and I'm, I'm almost for certain that it was just probably played as a bumper commercial ad and front of a football game that you know I, I didn't know what it was i you know what i mean like i didn't i didn't know what i was watching because at i'm nine years old at the time uh seeing this but i do remember seeing the trailer for halloween four and then obviously for halloween five we saw the trailer because that that one will always stick out with me with the yeah. king kong or godzilla scream <sighs> Do you remember that? Oh. Like oh, yeah, it's so bonkers. Like what the fuck? Oh, for sure, <laughs> like, for sure. No, but you're where right. Where is I this mean, sound coming from? But yeah. I do remember the ad. I just don't remember what it was that I right. was watching. It's not like I, I. It's not like your. I had the same reaction like your brother did because I didn't know what this was. I just right. remember sitting there at my grandparents' Sunday and seeing this you know ad for this movie that of course I, you know didn't didn't know eventually within a year after you know moving into a new town was going to change my life forever because that's ultimately what halloween 4 did it changed me it, it turned me into a fan uh of franchise that now has been you know over 30 years you know yeah and a love for a franchise uh that i've enjoyed talking about you know with whoever i could talk about with back in the day which was almost next to no one yeah uh, or my brother for, right. for that matter and right. um you know and uh yeah i mean you know what and, yes. and and when it comes to george p i mean obviously i prefer his performance in halloween 4 and and it's it's largely because there's certain adjustments he made and this could have been a directorial thing it may not have been i you know um but there was a, a few adjustments he made in his walk that I just didn't like. Uh, and, you know, and I say this with all due respect, but this is, these are just the facts. Of course he was heavier, you know, so he, he was heavier in, in six and, you know, I didn't, you know what I mean? Didn't quite jive in with me, although a lot of people love it. Uh, in four, obviously, we have to give a shout out to Tom Morga, who obviously was Michael in a few of those shots. When Michael steps in and he's got the the uh, bandages on and he puts the thing through the mechanic, that's not George P. That's I believe that's Tom Morga, if I'm not mistaken. And mm. when uh, Kelly Meeker gets uh, the shotgun through the uh, through the uh, torso i believe that's also tom morga if i'm not mistaken um so but it's george p for the you know the vast majority of the movie of course um sure but uh, it's like in the original some shots were right. nick's you know majority of the shots were nick but some yeah. were well i mean uh, one of them exactly i mean one of the most iconic shots not only in halloween but in any halloween movie michael breaking into the closet that's not nick castle that's tommy lee wallace that's so, tommy so lee wallace. you know yeah. uh so yeah but yeah you know and george i've never not liked george i i you know in, in in terms of the the you know the shape um i i don't think he's been one of my favorites but but with every passing, and again, we I say this with all due respect to everybody that's come after, but we, you know, with every passing movie up until, of course, James Jude Courtney, who who I who I th- I I think it was the the first time where the portrayal of the shape of Michael was really treated like an art in and of itself. Uh, really yeah, sort of up trying until the to, last one. <laughs> right, no, but I'm just saying, like, I, I don't think the others, I mean, maybe they kind of, oh, we'll just do this, whatever. But I, I wasn't a fan of Chris Durant's uh, shape. I wasn't a fan of Brad Laurie's shape. Uh, I wasn't a fan. I always forget, which one did Resurrection, which one did H2O? B- Brad Laurie or Brad Laurie did Resurrection. Chris Duran okay. did H two O. Yeah, and when okay. I say I'm not a fan, I'm not saying it's dog shit. I'm not saying that, right? You know, we and I have to preface it because you know this is the internet and you live in a world of extremes online. Um, Tyler is just is just he's WWF. You yeah, know I mean? that's like, I don't even big. really ever he's think. Big. <laughs> I don't ever really think about 
And again, I say this with all due respect to fans out there that like it, but I don't ever really ever think about Rob Zombie's films. I mean, it took me, what, four or five years to even include his movies in a Halloween ranking because they just feel like it's, it, it feels elseworld to me. Like it's not, it's, it's not, which it is. It's not connected to, I mean, yes, they technically, they did restructure the timeline a couple of times, but Rob Zombie's two films are not canonically connected to any of the previous movies. Yes, Halloween uh, H2O... It's like erases, a multi, multiverse Halloween, right? Right. Halloween H2O erases 4, 5, 6, but it's still connected to the first two. So you always right. have it connected to one of some, some movie somewhere in there, whereas... Rob Zombie's films are completely alienated over in their own world. So I never, I don't like them. So I don't think about them. I don't watch them. So yeah. I don't include them. So, and I don't, I just, it's just me. So um, yes, and Tyler Maine, yes. If you were to include him, he's more of that brute WWE sort of thing. Um, but I do like, you know, there's certain things that, I mean, when I love the roof scene with George, I do. I think it's yeah. a great scene. I wish it would, I, and I understand why, you know, logistically, um, you know, there's sometimes you have ideas and you want to do it. And then you, you know, you, you either don't have the money or you don't have the time, or, you know, whatever it is. Originally that roof was going to be on fire. And, uh, and I think that, that, that would have been, been cool. That would have been really cool, but they didn't do yeah. it. Okay. George does look a little, there's a, there's a few times, especially more so in four than in six, because in six, he's a bit heavier. So I don't get that vibe from him in terms of his stature in four. I, I get it a few times is more that Frankenstein kind of thing. Like when he's coming over the roof and he puts his leg over and it's all like, like it's very Frankenstein kind of stuff. There's little things like that that I was never, you know, a big fan of. But overall, well, I think he's. I think the reason why he did say, from my understanding, that he was playing it like Michael as a burn victim, where it would be very hard to have mobility with his body. You know, with is that what he said? I've I've everything. never heard that. Yeah, that I've I think never heard that's that. why he made those conscious decisions to play Mike, which I guess would make sense. I mean, I'm not a burn. I hope no, no, and one, look, you know what I mean? And, um, but when you think about like, you know, how much Myers was burned in, in mm -hmm. Halloween too, it would almost make sense that he would have very limited mobility with his body well, the, because I mean, of his skin being burnt. Yeah. If, if I, I, I haven't heard, I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I haven't heard that if George did say that and, 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 and that's why he did that, then that's why he did that as a, as a director, I still would have told him not to do it. <laughs> You know, because it looks too Frankenstein and we don't, and sure. there's no point, there's no point in time where the audience knows that's why he's doing that, right? That might be the you justification. I'm sorry if you're picking that up, like the sirens are blaring. No, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Okay. Um, maybe, yeah, I don't hear anything. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe that's the justification for it, but if the audience doesn't have an opportunity to know that's why, and nor why would they, I mean, unless, unless there was a line at the beginning where like, you know, one of the doctors are like, he can't even move. There's too many burns. He, you know, he'd, he'd be too stiff, you know, unless there's like a throwaway line like that. And then we see him being all stiff and then the audience is like, oh, okay. But there's, there's, you know, that's never explained. So, so sure. for, for the audience, we just look it just looks like that's just his portrayal as Dick Warlock's was that portrayal and so on and so forth all, all the way. Even if that was the justification, if I was the director, I would have said, George, I get it totally. I love that you're thinking like this. That's amazing. But let's not do that. Now, here's the other thing, too, because he's saying this in the context of years being removed of it. Is he trying to defend his performance? You know what I mean? Well, that, it's that's not the a, other. Yeah. I, I got to find that. Yeah, it, for sure. I'll find it and, and send and, that to you because it could also be something like, could be? you know, because you see, you know, you're, you're exposed to all this stuff on social media. Now people are saying this about Halloween four. they, they say this, they say that. And he's saying, cause even Dick says a few things in that, you know, in that, um, thing with, uh, Nick Castle and Sean that I'm like, is he, did that really happen? Or is he trying to, you know, because of shit that's been said over the years, you know, maybe say like, well, but that's the reason why I did it. And maybe that's because I've heard nothing but nice things that 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 it, of course. no one's ever said anything bad about George P. Warren. No, he's and a, and I'm not a really nice guy, and maybe 100%. he just feeling, you know that insecurity of being just critiqued and Listen, you know whatever, and then comes out and says like, well, you know, I was playing it like a burn victim, but did he really do that in '88 or '87 when they make it, or is he saying that now to kind of 
you know. Who knows? Who knows? And, you know, right. and I want people to understand, too, who are tuning in. We're celebrating, George. We're celebrating everything. Yeah, we're not. I don't want to get into no, no, that. Like, we're, you know, we're, cele into we're celebrating everything. Everything. The good, the bad. We're celebrating George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers, right? Now, I don't know George as a right. human being. And I'm I'm with you. I've heard nothing but amazing things about the guy. Um, right. So. Uh, that he's just like one of the super nicest of course, dudes you could of possibly course, ever of course. meet. Of course, um, of, of course. That's so. that's not the point, right? Um, Which is weird, right? He's playing a serial killer, but he's one of the most it's, nicest. It's guys often ever. like, look, <laughs> oh, I can tell you, the guy who plays, you know, uh, Billy in our films is one of the nicest men. You, he's a sweetheart of a guy. Shout out to Brian Charles Peter. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Most, you know, and right. you know, Robert Englund he is a is a nice guy. You know, a, a lot of them are. Oh, um, sometimes I think Robert did let it go to his head a little bit. <laughs> well, Robert's a you chatter know? like me. I mean, Jesus, yeah. you get me and Robert into a room. No, I mean, when he got into the character, I think sometimes he got into the character. Well, he's, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he, he also is a, is a, you know, he's, he's, he's a bit method in his, in his ways too. Yeah. So, but no, George, look, I've, I've, I've always liked George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers in Halloween four. I'm okay with it in six, but the change of color of the jumpsuit and, you know, a little bit heavier, a little bit, it, it changes the look, right? It changes the feel. Well, of the especially because it's supposed to be the continuity of four, five and six. Right. 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 But enough time has passed that it, it doesn't bother me that he's in, like, it's not like it picks up immediately after five. It does pick up six right. years later. So him being in a different colored, you know, jumpsuit, Yes, the logic can make sense, but when you when you change the color or you change, you know, he puts on a bit of weight, whatever, it changes the look and feel of the character. So, um, so I much prefer George in four than I do six. And there's some nice moments. I really like the moment with Brady on the, on the, uh, on the oh, staircase. It's a great, it's a great yeah. moment. It's a great moment. He's up there and he's like, get, get upstairs, Rachel. Come on, baby. Come on. It's great. Even the night nightmare dream sequence with uh, Daniel Harris. And oh, Jamie. it's great. Um, That's love great. That at the beginning, you know, um, yeah. she's she's often talked about that. You know how he was how he was very just very gentle with her as they were making that yes. scene and 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 whatnot. Yeah. Um, you know, and just it speaks volumes to like him understanding, like he knows the role he's playing, but you know she's eight, nine, ten, whatever she was when they made. Yeah. Well, she she'd be ten when they made that movie. Ten. Um, um, yeah. I know she's playing a nine-year-old or whatever, but yeah. her eight-year-old, but I mean, her, in real life, I mean, like she's 10 because she was two years, she's born two years before us. Yeah. She's playing uh, a seven-year-old actually. Right. So, you know, and he's handling her very, you know, she talks about that, how he, you know, was just very gentle, making yeah. sure she, you know, that it was make-believe, that it wasn't real. And um, th th that's, that speaks volumes to a person's character um, when you're making that type of movie, because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to take his time out, you know, and just be like, you know, you know, don't be scared and whatnot. But they're creating this great visual nightmares that you find out it's a nightmare scene. Because yeah. at first, when you're watching, you're like, "Is this shit going down for real?" Yeah, you know, like, and then you you, re you realize it's a nightmare. No, it's a, it's 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 a great scene, and it's it's I like how it's lit. I like when she opens the door and how oh, you know yeah, he's backlit. You know, he's backlit. Yeah. He's got the and I will tell you the mask. The mask. You know, again, it's 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 because of where we. If that if there was no mask before it. We wouldn't be, it, it is, you know, when you remove the attachment and it, which is hard to do, but when you remove it and you just take it at face value, when he sits up on the other side of the bed and does the turn and the lightning flash, you see his face. Yeah. I mean, in and of itself, it's a creepy mask. You know, it's, it's not Michael Myers that we know, right? It's not the same. It's similar. It's not the same, but it, but it is a creepy mask in and of itself. And when she opens the door and he's there and he looks down and he lifts up the knife like this, it's a creepy mask. And I think a lot of the times what ends up happening is uh, it really comes down to how you light the mask, shoot right. the glass no anyway it's how you it's how you die hard it's how you uh light it because i've said this before on the channel you know uh, 
And I understand why. But when, you know, nowadays, of course, there's a lot of independent Michael Myers mask makers out there who have, you know, the Kirk molds and they're making amazing looking Halloween one masks. And there's so many different versions with slight variations and different shading and all that kind of stuff, right? I got a few of them. You've had some. I think you still have one, you know, back there. I mean, yeah, there's all di- there. Yeah, it's it's amazing. However, and understandably so, the masks today are made and shaded to look like certain scenes from the movie. Well, when Tommy Lee right. Wallace bought that mask, he tore off the eyebrows, he tore off the sideburns, he spray painted it a fish belly white. He didn't go in and shade it. It looks, the 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 shading and the shadows and how that mask looks in the original um, Halloween is all because of how it's lit. There is no shading. If you, if Nick Castle was to walk into a convention, if there was a convention in 1978, if he was to walk into, I don't know, Mad Monster, Arizona in 1978, if it existed, you know, and he walked in and he's a cosplayer wearing that mask from the movie, all your independent masks would look better than his mask. Because his mm-hmm. mask is just white. And you can see that in a lot of the BTS photos. It's just, it's it's plain. There's nothing special about it. But if you know how to craft your lighting and craft your shots and really work with it, and what you can look, make it look really creepy, some split lighting, low key light. You can really have fun with it. So I find that you can take a mask like the Halloween 4 mask on George B. Wilmer, and depending on the lighting, you can make, you, you can look at it and go, you know what, it actually looks not bad in it. Like, you know, because they've crafted it, they've thought about it. How is he gonna look here? You know, where's, what what lighting are we gonna, you know, use? What lenses are we gonna use? How close is he gonna be? How far is it? Is it split lighting? Is it, you know, whatever. And it can look all right. And then there's times in the movie where it's just too there. It's just too, hello, you know? And it's just like, ah, uh, that's, you, you, you know what I mean? So, um, anyways, I digress, but, but, um, yeah, the mask has grown on me over the years. I, it, it might be maybe my third favorite. And now when I say my, my first would be one and two, cause it's the same mask. Right. I, I think I do have to give props to Christopher Nelson and the Nelson. masks that they were able to use yeah. in 18 kills and even ends, but certainly in 18 yeah. and kills. Uh, I mean, I think that's got to come in number two for me at the very least. And then I might put four next. I know that's unpopular. Ooh. I know that's, that's unpopular. That's about where I would... That's about where I, I would go. I'd go the original, like one and two. Yeah. Um, I definitely do like the 18 and kills mask. And then... Yeah. Um, Four, yeah, I would put four right there, right I, after yeah. it. Yeah, and um, I, again, I know it's not popular because you're you're more likely to get after those two. You're more likely to get like um, probably Halloween six, or yeah. you know one of the H two O masks. There was you know four hundred and thirty seven of them. You know, Resurrection <laughs> would be near, the, yeah, including the like CGI the six shit. Mask. Re, uh, Resurrection yeah. would be near the bottom. Rob Zombie's mask might be somewhere in the middle. But yeah, no, I, I, there's something about four, again, it's, I don't think it's great. Not in every shot. Like every shot the original mask is in is fucking great. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's like, it's cause it's, it's, they shot it like almost like an art film. It's an art film. I mean, right. really, I mean, when you're taking right. that type of time to create a shot and create lighting, you're, you know, you're, it's not running gun. You're, you're ultimately creating art with of everything course. that you're doing and in your shots. Cause I know somebody, whether you like horror or not, it's still art. You right. Know? Uh, I know somebody might, say this yes we did see michael myers in that mask during the daytime in the original halloween but like i've said on this channel many times it's from a distance i it's almost not, was gonna say not, we did and i'm like oh yeah that's right no, we did it's <laughs> like, not close up so okay. what so what ends up happening is when you see myers during the day in the original film and you see them that mask from a distance right so it's just the plain mask but because that it's from a distance our eyes are filling in those shadows, right? Our eyes are doing this. You know, we just see like the black holes and our eyes are creating and seeing, you know, seeing those kinds of things. If it was close up, it wouldn't be nearly as effective. If Michael Myers had lifted his head into frame outside, you know, in broad daylight with the sun beaming down and he's got the phone to his ear, Eh, you know, we're kind of, you know, it's, it's not nearly as dramatic, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Sure. So, um, uh, that's why though, right? It was always at a distance, but the second you show it, you know, clear or in brightly lit light, um, it, uh, it, close up, it can look, it doesn't look that great. Like when 
George kills Bucky in Halloween four and the and then there's the last new remaining sort of spark from the from the Transformer and you see him there and you see his mask and it's all it, it, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look very good. Don't try that trick trick or treat shit with me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It doesn't look very good. And there's a couple of moments there. Of course there's the debacle in, you know, the school with the school. pink hair and all that stuff. Yeah. But listen Do you have a uh between four and six? Because I've been sitting here thinking about it and it's tough. Do you have a favorite kill of George's version of Michael uh, between the two two movies? I gotta say, um, I'll tell you what some of my favorite George moments are. So, and then we'll talk about kill. So, uh, yeah. So, um, I like. I don't like six, but here's my favorite moment with George P. Wilbur in Halloween Six, when I don't know if he did the fall or if somebody else did the fall. But when he falls down the stairs and he's lying at the bottom and Kara mm -hmm. and Danny uh, come down the stairs and she's got to like step over him. Do you know what I mean? Just the way that George is lying there. It's, it's the position of his body. It's the way it's lit. And then he grabs her ankle and, you know, um, I, I love that scene. I, I, I think it's, I, I really like the way it looks there's some suspense there. You you know, you could take that scene out of that movie and put it in any other Halloween movie and it would still work. You know what I mean? It's not sure. solely dependent on the story and all that kind of stuff. It's just a nice suspenseful moment with Michael. I like that. In four, I like the Brady kill. I think that's, that's you know, it's fantastic. You know, um, I like the... Um, uh, I like when the cop is sitting in the chair and in the distance you see Michael's mask. You see the mask. Sort yeah, of appear, a cool shot. move away. Yeah. I like the roof scene, like, you know, that you were talking about. The roof scene is great. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and I mean, minus, I mean, I, I, I don't like the stiffness of how George is playing him, but the, the, the scene and the set and the idea and, Love it. Yeah, I think it's 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 cool, you know, and he's walking across the shingles like that. He's got the knife in his hand and it's like, fuck, you know what I mean? Uh, really cool stuff. Um, the truck scene is cool. Yeah, that's cool. Same logic issues with you. Like, how did they not, what, how's that even, how did, but uh, the execution, the execution is, really cool. yeah. is awesome of the truck. Yeah. It's just, as a kid, I didn't care. I loved it. You know, that's, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. that's the best part about being a kid. You don't care about that shit. You don't care right. about the logic behind, you know, Michael getting onto the truck and climbing over and tossing everybody. When you're 10 years old, that's just the coolest shit you're fucking, you know, you're watching. As an adult, obviously, you know, unfortunately, that's the, the the one part about that sucks about growing up is you lose the innocence of imagination because right. you start to go, how'd this motherfucker do that now? You know right. what I mean? Like, rather than maybe thinking, like I said, you know, not having the, the guys on the pickup truck and uh, having Michael laying down on the back of the bed, Rachel jumps in, throws Jamie in the truck and they're driving off, you know, to try to get to get away from Michael and yeah. Michael pops up and then boom, you go into it like that. Right. Or, or you could have Earl in, in the truck and it's just Earl in the girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Michael sits up, you know, maybe you have, maybe you do a sit up moment like that. You know what I mean? An exterior shot of seeing Mike, of seeing Michael sit up on the back of the bed. That would yes. have been a cool thing. Cause that's yeah. Michael's MO. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what I think of as an adult but as a kid I, I didn't care but it's when you get to when he kills earl and rachel tosses earl out the truck from that moment on i fucking love it the music yeah. that uh, alan howarth did everything's yep. fucking awesome it's great and also up until up until just last year george p wilbur was the reigning michael well yeah well him and tony or, or him and um uh tyler main i guess because tyler main did play michael twice but it's a separate yeah i, I get it we we do have to include tyler main technically it is true even though he didn't look anything like michael myers and it, he was playing the character but but in, in terms of uh looking like michael myers we'll say uh george p wilbur up until just last year was was you know the reigning champ if you think about it and what i mean by reigning champ i mean he played michael myers the most twice Yes, as right. I just said, Tyler Maine did play him twice as well, but if you didn't know Halloween 2 was a Halloween movie and you saw Tyler Maine as Michael Myers, you'd just think he was some bum. So uh, no disrespect to Tyler Maine, love Tyler Maine, but I'm talking about like the signature idea, like we're talking like Michael Myers, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. George P. Wilbur, man, George P., you know, right up until 2020. 
too, because James Jude tied him in 2021 with Halloween Kills, and then, of course, uh, passes him uh, this past year. Um, but that's pretty cool as well. And I think George wanted to come back and do, he either wanted to come back and do I think H2O it was either or, it was either resurrection. It was either five. Oh, okay. Or H two O, yeah, something like that. I forget which one it was, but I I know he wanted to do another one. I, I forget why he couldn't. But listen, I mean, George P is is a Halloween icon. Uh, he's you know definitely um, you know uh, a Halloween legend. And um, Michael Myers, uh, a lot of people like him, like his portrayal. And for a lot of people, he was their gateway, like yourself, into the character, you know. Yep. And um, uh, so there's a lot of and, and, and I don't I don't think his portrayal is. Yeah, like I'm I'm fine with it, you know, um, it's a little stiff for me, but so is Dick Warlock. You know, it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's not, uh, but I, I, I think George, but I like his portrayal in four the best, I think between the two. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you have and, a favorite, uh, favorite kill between four and six? Yeah. Favorite kill. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah. So favorite There's a kill. couple. There's a, it's, it's tough to narrow down one because when I, although I'm not a fan of six, I love when he, he executes the fucking father in the basement and the head explodes. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just gnarly in itself. Um, yeah. it's yeah. a very intense, it's a very intense scene when he kills, uh, Kara's brother and his girlfriend after they just had sex. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. The girlfriend. Yeah. Not so yeah. much the brother, the brother right. dies, but when he kills and he's stabbing her in the back and it's kind of slow motion ish. Yes. Kind of a little bit. That's an intense, uh, intense kill. Um, at the hospital when he kills all the doctors in the theatrical cut, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I think I, I I go back to four a lot. Um, you know, well, and thumb, I don't I don't even think that's through the. I actually don't even think that's George P with the doctor with the big thing. I think that's uh, I forget his name now, but the because that was a scene that was added oh. in. I don't okay. think that's George P. Are you talking about with like when they're in the the the, the room there and he's the operating the room at the end of shit? six? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. that's not don't, okay. Well, I George, don't you didn't think so. you, you were you were spared. Yeah, <laughs> I don't just, think uh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um in four. I'm trying to think. Which I mean, I like the Brady favorite? kill. I I do like the Kelly Meeker kill, but again, I think but that's it's not Tom George. Morga. I right. think. Um Does George put the thumb through the the the, the I doctor? I believe so, yes. Okay. I, so. I like that's that. A good one. That's a good kill. Or it uh, um, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it, it could be. I do like uh, the tearing of the neck, which was, of course, uh, a scene oh, that was Earl. added later. Earl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Whether that was actually George that did that, I don't know. Um, well, I know he did this truck scene, right? Because he's he's a stunt I think guy. so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I think, I stand um, to be corrected, but I think George P. Wilbur's worked with, who has he worked with here? Or who, let me just see some, because he's obviously... Uh, Sure. And this is what happens when I don't watch six that much. I'm trying to think of um, some of the other so, kills that I mean, Michael killing Jamie. I don't know if that was George, but that was that's. I mean, when he puts her through the farm equipment, whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it might have been. Looks like it uh, might have been. some of the um, movies that George P. Bober was a uh, stunt guy on. Uh, unlawful entry, Doctor Giggles, some of these movies I've never heard of. Uh, Not of this world, The Silence of the Lambs. George was a, a stunt Ooh. guy on Silence of the Lambs. Uh, the Exorcist Three. Ooh, Dominion, Total Recall. Uh, now there's he. Now again, can, there's lots uh, of stunt guys. But. You can make a nice career out of being a stunt guy. You really yeah. can. Yep. Oh, for sure. Ghostbusters Two, yeah. The Burbs. I'm just naming ones that people would know here. Die Hard, Die Hard, George P. Wilbur. Greatest Christmas movie ever. Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Dead Heat, uh, going all the way back. Or Poltergeist 2, just reading the ones that people might know. Fletch, uh, Ghostbusters, oh, Fletch. Firestarter, no Firestarter. Um, Star the Trek 2. Uh, the original Firestarter. The original wow, okay. Firestarter, yeah. Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan, the original Poltergeist. Um, again, I, I don't know to what degree 
and what he was doing specifically on these movies, I'm not sure. But he's credited as stunts as George Wilbur. He's credited as George Wilbur as stunts. He's working. He's working. He's working on the movie, whether he's the coordinator, whether he's, well, it would actually probably say stunt coordinator. But he's, you know, right. how, how dirty he's getting his hands. On movies, there's usually several stunt men and women. So who knows what he was doing? He was helping. But a lot of the times, stunt guys and gals will be there for, you know, to help, you know, as well. Um, if they're not right mm. in the scene, they're there to help. He's working, as you said. He, he, you know, he's working. And it's it's quite the, uh, quite the filmography. Escape from New York. Um, let's see here. Uh, scrolling all the way down. We're getting to the early 70s here. We're getting to his, his first one, his first credited one anyway on IMDb is El Dorado in 1966. And he's credited again as stunts. Oh, Planet of the yeah. Apes, the original Planet of the Apes Ooh. from 1968, although it says he's uncredited, but he, he okay. worked on it. Uh, he was uncredited again on Conquest of the Planet of the Apes in 1972. Uh, the Mission Impossible TV series from 69 to 72, three episodes. The original Poseidon Adventure from 1972. Um, Gunsmoke, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, you know, he was working, man. He was working. Rest in peace, George P. Wilbur. But best known, yeah. best known as Michael Myers from Halloween 4 and Halloween 6. Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers, Halloween 6. And he's the, the, uh, he's, he's the first Michael we've lost in the franchise, right? Yes, I believe so. I believe so. Yes, that is. That and that's is, that's yeah. that that is the unfortunate thing to this. Um, you know, uh, even when I made the post the other day, I knew the majority of the people, except for those who 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 follow me because of the show that we do. I mean, he's not like he. It's not like posting Leonardo DiCaprio. Or, you know, he's not like a big name, but you know, to me, I I, I took that. I, it sucked because it's, it's part of your childhood. It's part of your youth. Right. Um, and the, un, the unfortunate thing about life is we do get older and, right. you know, he was 81. So obviously, you know, he was, he was up there in age. He wasn't a young buck. Mm -hmm. uh, still though, I, 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 I'm trying to push for, for three digits. Hopefully I can make it uh, to three <laughs> digits. We'll see. I'm we'll pushing see, yeah. for it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm training for it. So we'll yep. see what happens. I don't know if I'll make it, but we'll see. <laughs> but it's, it's the reality. It's the reality yeah. of, you know, he's the first of what we're going to probably see over if you and i are still doing this show together even in the next 10 years yep you know there's gonna be a lot of names we're gonna be having yep. shows like this you know that were part of this franchise that are no longer gonna be with i, I don't know yep. if dick warlock will be here 10 years from now maybe yeah he's yep. up there right um nick might be still around i mean uh maybe you know uh depending on you know if he takes care of himself because he's got to be what in his 70s now or late 60s Who, who's that nick Nick Castle. Nick, uh, Nick is in his early. He's in his. He's like seventy four or five. Yeah, or, or so, at least uh, no, 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 no. At least early, early seventies. So if yeah. he's even early seventies, he's going to be pushing eighties. You know, in ten years from now, who yeah. knows? You know, I mean, uh, but it is the reality. It sucks that that's the the unfortunate part of reality. Sometimes yeah. is that we are only here for a brief moment, and uh, you know, when you see something like that uh, pop up on your feed, it just it. it you know, I, I spent most of the day reflecting, you know, I was watching the movie and I watched Halloween four and l listened to the soundtrack and was really just right. more so reflecting on my childhood because of how this movie was introduced to me and how it was such a part of a big part of my childhood that, you know, um, it's, it's, it's just an unfortunate reality to life sometimes. And, uh, like I said, over the next 10 years, if you and I are still doing this, I got a feeling there's a lot of these names we're going to be uh, well, talking it, about. It is. It's just, it's just the reality, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's, yep. it's, uh, it, it's not fun to think about, but yeah, no, you're right. No. It is. It's the reality it's not, of the that's situation. The, that's, that's the shitty part. It's not fun to think about, but it's, it's reality that yep. we're, we're not, that we're not here forever. So now when I'm watching Halloween for it, 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 it almost hits you in a different way to when you see him on screen right. to know that he's no longer with us. He's gone. It's like, right. damn, you know, like, cause at the moment, nobody, everybody was still here. You know, as far as right. I know, no one has anybody from has anybody that that i'm not aware of has died in real life from the halloween franchise besides besides donald pleasant i know that obviously i mean i i mean somebody known deborah in hill, Maine, I know that. deborah hill yeah yeah i don't i don't know i'm not sure 
Uh, I mean, I'm sure off people... the top of my head, I can't think of anybody. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not talking about like low key side characters that I right. wouldn't remember. I'm talking about main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. The Jamie Lee Curtis's, the Danielle Harris's, the Ellie right. Cornell's, and you know, right. so on and so forth. I don't think so. I don't think yet. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, they, yeah. other than Donald Pleasance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't think anyone has passed away at, at the moment. You know, right. Right. So. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. George P. Wilbur, folks. Well, let's head over to the chat room yeah. and see what you guys and gals are saying. And and uh, listen, if you're watching after the fact, comment below and let Tony and I know your favorite moments with George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers from Halloween 4 and Halloween 6. Uh, just jump into the comment section down below and start the discussion and let us know you're, you're maybe the first time you, maybe he's your favorite Michael Myers. Tell us why. You know what I mean? And uh, just, just, just celebrate George P. Wilbur in the comment section below. We would, we would love to, uh, we'd love to read it and we'd love to know your thoughts on that. Now, before we uh, hang on, let me just go uh, to the, uh, get those super chats because there were some that, that did come in. Um, there we go. Oh, we supers here. Okay, we're there. Now, before we uh, do that, just a reminder again, and because uh, this is a good time to do that, uh, about what I said off the top of the show. And also, there was somebody in the chat, I forget who, who it was, I think it was somebody by the name of Ryan, uh, was asking why I was selling what I was selling, or thought it, it felt weird to sell it, and maybe I should sell it for the campaign, you know, the Indiegogo campaign of It's Me, Billy. It's important to note, uh, Ryan, that this is not, this has nothing to do with the Indiegogo campaign. I'm not selling this because for the Indiegogo campaign. That's the, uh, the Indiegogo campaign is a separate thing still three months away. Uh, this is just, I'm doing cleaning as we often sometimes do when you have tons of memorabilia and tons of stuff. Uh, I thought, you know what? I'd like to, I, you know, I'd like to go to a good home, so I'm going to sell it. And, uh, so again, very, uh, very, Quickly now, if, if if anybody is interested in this, in this box is an 8x10 autographed photo of uh, Nick Castle and Nancy Loomis. It's the one where Nick is in the back, Nancy's on the phone. Oh, Paul, what are you doing? That kind of thing. In here is also the Halloween box set, uh, Halloween uh, 6, 7, and 8 um, box set from Scream Factory, Shout Factory, whatever. Hasn't been opened. It's still wrapped. I haven't opened it. It's in here. It's Me Billy Chapter 1 on Blu-ray. It hasn't been opened. It's in here. Men's It's Me Billy medium t-shirt. It's in here. The Halloween 18 CD. That's ah, a CD, but it's a CD. It's never been played. It's in here. And the Birth Movies Death uh, 40th Anniversary uh, uh, Celebration, Halloween Celebration uh, Magazine mm. is in here as well uh, from 2018. Talks all about Halloween, John Carpenter, all that kind of stuff. It's all in here. 375, shipping included. Message me via my Facebook page in the link down below. Many things, Dave McRae. I've done this before in the past when I've been like cleaning stuff out. I got so much stuff. You know what? You know, I mean, I could hold an auction, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not Sean Clark. <laughs> I don't have that much stuff. Okay. Uh, just, you know, things that you're like, you know what, this, maybe somebody will want this. You know what I mean? I'll, you know, so, you know, you put it up for sale like we all do. So uh, just send me a message down below if it interests you. If not, well, then it'll sit over there in the corner and maybe I'll bring it out again someday. Uh, let me know. Okay. Let's jump into the um, chat room and see what people are saying. Let me get those super chats that came in earlier. Cody Snyder sends in $5. Thanks, Cody. And says, I'm sure that, oh, he's talking about the package. I'm sure that package is awesome, Dave, but I'm saving money for that workshop. Ah, there's my man. There's my man. I got you, buddy. I got you. Uh, Matthew Farisi sends in $4.99 and says, I'm hoping to maybe go to the convention this year, hoping I can save enough money. Oh, the Halloween 45th convention. Yeah, no official announcement has been made yet on a Halloween 45th anniversary convention. I mean, officially. I mean, there's been little kind of things. Um, but yeah, I'm sure an announcement very soon is coming. I believe it'll be back in Pasadena, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this at the end of September, beginning of October. Um, I think is what they're planning on doing. If they do one? If I can, because... Um, I'll probably be, hopefully, fingers crossed, well into pre-production on It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2 by that point. There you go. And uh, so I might not be able to go, um, but I would love to go. I'd love to be able to also go and and do that. That that would be really cool. I did go to the 40th, so we'll see. We'll see. 
Um, Cody Snyder, an extra five bucks. What are you doing, Cody? You're supposed to be saving that money. An extra five bucks. It says, also got some new Under Armour. I thought that said underwear for a minute. Under Armour running shoes. You and Tony are runners. What are your guys' go-to shoes for running? What's your go-to shoes for running, Tony? I, I don't really do that. Dave's more the runner than I am. I do more um, lifting now. Mm. Uh, I stopped running probably three three years ago i've changed mm. my cardio up a little bit uh because i just was i don't know too thin uh now i'm like a buck 95 getting closer to that 200 pound mark wow i oh, get um, jacked getting bigger getting bigger so my cardio is a little bit different now than it was uh but as far as i i don't even remember what the hell i ran in um I, I yeah, usually, I really don't. I usually run in a pair of Asics, which is uh, running shoes, you know. So I'm usually an Asics or. Um, uh, I have an Air Assault bike, you know, that Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's a fucking killer workout. Oh, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. But yeah, Asics or what's the other one? Saucony? Saucony? Saucony or whatever it is. Those are the, usually the I two that so. I, I go to between running shoes and uh, and listen yeah i mean if you're a runner you're you're going to be spending a you know a buck 30 buck 40 on on a good pair of running shoes it's sometimes more i'm not like a i'm not like a fucking triathlete so but i'll usually spend like you know 120 130 bucks on a pair of good running shoes that will last me you know uh, at least a year because i run like a couple of times a week, you know, and, and, uh, and they're very light, of course, you know, which is great. You know, you don't want to run, you know, you don't want to go jogging in basketball shoes. You can play basketball in basketball shoes, but you don't want to go jogging. Okay. in basketball shoes. You want really light, light shoes specifically made for running. So yeah, usually Asics or something like that. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Josh McKenna sends in nine ninety nine. Says, "Do you like the show Seventh Heaven?" I used to love this show, but I don't like it anymore because of the dad. The actor is so evil. Normally, I can separate the art, but not in this case. Yeah, the the yeah yeah. Well, you're not alone, man. You're not alone. Um, I didn't watch Seventh Heaven, so I know the show you're talking about, but it wasn't. When did Seventh Heaven come out? Like, was it late nineties, early two thousands? Nineties, right? Yeah. It wasn't a no, but I, you know what I am ca catching up on is I'm catching up on Highway to Heaven, little Michael oh. Landon and uh, Victor French. Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't realize, I, or I didn't realize. It, we used to watch the show a lot as kids with my father right. growing up. Uh, my father, he was a big Michael Landon fan, loved Little House, nice. and specifically Hi Highway to Heaven uh, was 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 one of the uh, shows that was always on rotation. I didn't realize as now that I'm catching it and catching a lot of the reruns here, um, the actors who starred on that show, there's a lot of names that are, you know, that made, and not only one appearance, but multiple appearances as different characters. And the one I shared the other day was a very young uh, Paul Walker. You know, mm. I mean, I was just like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I saw that. There was a couple, yeah, yeah. there was a couple episodes that he had done um, yeah. on that show and uh yeah you know it's it's a shows like that like highway to heaven they're just you know they don't make stuff like that anymore yeah uh, just good you know you know good wholesome shows that you can sit down with your family uh and watch without having to have some type of agenda thrown in your face and whatnot and uh um yeah but i never saw seventh heaven is that isn't it isn't jessica beale in that she is yeah that's where she got her start yeah i mean not right. uh, it wasn't the first yeah. thing she did but it's what rose and the wasn't the mother who's in child's play in that yes, show too that is correct that is correct so yep. yeah, i just i never i never watched it no i didn't either i didn't either the only thing i know is yeah. seventh heaven that's it I don't, I don't know anything oh, else. Like the theme song? Yeah, theme something like song that. Or some shit? Something like that. Something like yeah. that. Uh, thank you, Josh. Matthew Farisi sends in four ninety nine. says, Halloween 4's atmosphere and lighting helps make the mask tolerable. If it was lit like H2O, it would be worse. Still better than H2O, 5, and Resurrection, though. I, I think that's a very valid point. I, I think, um, yes, I, I think... Halloween 4 is probably the, I mean, you could say 6 in terms of the fall atmosphere. And, and there's some, there, there, there's some nice cinematography in 6, for sure, for sure. Uh, but 4, yes, I think that absolutely helps the mask. Well, I think we've said that before. We've also said, too, with 4, it, it has the most aesthetic look, well, with excluding the new films. 
uh, up until that point, up until the new films, aesthetically, it looked like Halloween. It looked like a Midwest town. Right. Um, they definitely, they definitely did a good job uh, they did. on that as, as well too. They did. Yep. They did. Um, James, uh, excuse me, James Jude Courtney. Movie chat and more James part Jude two. Courtney. There you go. James Jude Courtney's in he's the here, chat, ladies here. and gentlemen. Movie chat and more part two sends in two pounds and says, James Jude who? Uh, looks like Richard's not a fan. Not a fan. I like James Jude. Not he's great. Fan. He's great. Uh, Blue Blood sends in $5. Says, hey, Dave and Tony, can you proofread my script for my Black Christmas short film called Billy's Revenge? I would appreciate it. Unfortunately, Blue Blood, no. So Tony and I don't accept scripts. We don't accept uh, things like that because if we did, we would be doing it all the time. Um, so it's nothing personal, but unfortunately, no. We don't accept scripts to read or anything like that. But... Um, you know, yeah, do your best to, to get in front of some, some eyeballs that, uh, you know, maybe in your circles or maybe you have, you know, a buddy who's a filmmaker or an aspiring, you know, filmmaker or what have you. And, and, and just, you know, continue to work. It's just, not personal. Just, it's not personal, but yeah. Just make the, make the film and put it out there and let us see it. Could do that too. Could do that too. You make know? the movie, put it out there and, and, and see how it goes. See how it goes or enter the script into a, a script writing contest or something like that. Yeah. Appreciate uh, the support to the channel though. Thank you. Uh, Sebastian sends in four ninety nine. says Dave and Tony going to soon have their teeth fall out from talking on two dudes from talking on two dudes. I'm going to cry. I don't want to see them. Oh, I see. See them in an old person home streaming. Oh, well, yeah, well, if right. Tony and I are literally still doing this 30 years from now, 80s. <laughs> I don't know what that says about our lives. I don't. <laughs> All right. Welcome to episode 5,726 <laughs> right. of two dudes and some feces. And speaking of feces, <laughs> I'm got it sitting in my pants right now. <laughs> Well, I think I think you you know to to not steal what you always say, but everything has a life shelf. You know what I mean. And at some point, I think Dave and I shelf life. Not, and it's yeah. not any time uh, shelf life. Yeah, it's not any time soon. But there will no. be a point, you know, where we, 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 we will have reached the end. And absolutely, you know, it'll be, and then it'll maybe be, Tony and I will do something else. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, know, you know, we may know, come I mean, up with a different. You know, maybe through doing this, we'll figure out another. You know, like. Uh, I'm, I'm starting up a YouTube channel again. It's just going to be strictly, uh, mixes my music. It's not going to yeah. be, it's not going to be movie talks. I'm not, nope, not doing all that. This is the Good only time Tony. that I'm, <laughs> oh, I got, believe me, I got messages <laughs> for that. When I posted that on Facebook the other day, I'm like, yeah, are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Like yeah. you're mad at me because I don't want to do fucking movie. I don't want to do movies. I don't want to talk about movies. Right, I don't want right. to talk about Michael Myers all the time. I want to do something. If I'm going to do something on YouTube, I want to do something that I enjoy and that I love. And I love mixing music. I love DJing. And, um, you know, I've been spending a lot of time honing my skills down. And I was like, with with Instagram, I could only get away with about 90 seconds. So it's, it's just not enough. Um, and Facebook, same thing. I, can, I There's only a short amount of time frame that I could get, a, you know, get away with. But on YouTube, I can put together a good 10 minute mix, you know, and just have fun and, you know, do something maybe like once a week or whatever. I, Cause that's the cool thing about this. I'm not, I'm not pressuring myself to where I have to do a show daily. I have to do a, uh, talk about this daily or whatever. I just, you know, whatever I feel like mixing and then I post it and then that's yeah. it. It's there. Um, you know, but yeah, dude, I couldn't believe that shit. Like I like literally had to like block this person. I'm just like, bro, you're getting mad at me. Like, why don't you talk about this? this, this? like, Cause I don't fucking want to, like, yeah, I don't want to do that shit. I mean, like I'm not, it's my heart's not in it. I'm not just because you yeah. want me to do it. I'm not going to do it. Like, yeah. Whatever. And look, you know, and, and, and I know you agree with this too. Like 99% of the people that, that watch or that are, you know, fans of the show or you or the channel, you know, whatever, or me, or, you know, whatever are fantastic. Like, I mean the, the, you know, when you break it down into like a percentile, I mean, it's, 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 it's very small, but there are like anything in life, you know, there, you know, the more people that there are, the more you, I mean, you know, if you pick a, you know, 30 people, there's, there's some people there, there, who are just a little bit too, there's some people who are just a little bit too entitled. Yes. Oh, for, for sure. Yes. That I, I was just going to get to that. Yeah, no, there are, there's, there's people that I think feel that, um, you know, I mean, people have to understand that, you know, this show is free. 
right? The channel's free. Now, people can send in super chats and they can support the channel and, and that's great, but it's not behind a paywall. <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, we take time out of our, you know, we're not getting paid to do this. You know what I mean? It's not like, and, and, and I'm not a big enough channel to, you know, be raking in the ad revenue, you know, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, we do it because we love it and we do it because we love you guys and we love hanging out and talking movies and, and chilling and, and, and just having fun. Right. And, and, but yes, there are always when, you know, if you have a group of 30 people, there's a, at least one of those people in that 30 is a, you know, is a bonehead. Right. And so, you know, when you have a group of, you know, what, what are we up to now? 28,300 subs or whatever, you know, there's probably a few of them in there. There's probably a few of them in there. And if that offends you, right. well, maybe that's you. No, uh, but you know, but, but it's very small. Like in the big picture, it's very small, but yes, there is a sense of entitlement. I've got it too. You know, over the years I've gotten, how come you're not talking about this? You know, that's why I watch you. you should talk. And it's like, dude, you, you're, like you're not paying for this shit. You know, you, right. you're not paying for it. It's free. It's free. You know what I mean? And so, but I think, yeah, there, there, there are people that, that, that feel that way. Now, I don't know. I always, I always go here and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. My, my mind always goes here because like, I, I think, oh, well, this has got to be somebody who's like, you know, Gen Z, you know, millennial, like it's gotta be somebody who's like 21. I don't know. So you know? now, well, now I'm seeing it more people are age. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, like... that's, that's what I was going to say is I don't know because, you know, we come from that era where like, why, why, why just, just what? what's going on? I think people, and then I think there, oh, so, so there are people that are definitely self-centered, entitled pricks. And then there are people yeah. that I think are just so passionate that they just, they mean well, they mean well, uh, but they don't understand that, you know, it, you know, you just kind of just chill out, you know, just relax. Well, chill and out, the thing is, know? is if, if, if you're going to do something. <laughs> and again, something it's a very on, small, small portion of them. It is. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you're, if you're someone who wants to be a content creator and you want to do something on YouTube, then you should be doing something that you love to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's not that I don't love talking about this, but I get it. I get my weekly fill when I do this show with Dave. I don't need to do anything beyond that. I don't have a desire to do that. That's, yeah, you know, yeah. my, you know, I'm not going to force myself to do something and what? And talk about the same stuff that I talk about with Dave when it comes to Halloween. Like, it's like, I, I talk about it already. I yeah, get I, that. I get that fulfillment when I need to talk about movies or whatever, when we do the show together. And yeah. when I, when it's no longer and I'm doing something else, you know, like if I'm mixing music or whatever, it's because I love doing it. I have fun yeah. doing it. And that's the type of content I want to put out there for myself. Um, well, that's, you know, just have fun with it. And that's what it's about. And if you're new to the channel, you probably don't know this, but if you're not new to the channel, you, you, you do, you know, when you look at the structure of my channel, right. You know, I've been called a movie review which which I understand. I mean, what are you, you know, what are you going to call me, right? Like I, I get that I get, you know, lumped in with, with you know, the reviewers. Uh, it's just kind of like a, a saying, but I'm not, I'm not. I, I don't review movies on the channel. I don't, I'm not reviewing TV shows. I'm not, you know, I'm more of a, in this space, I mean, obviously as in the real world, I'm a voice yeah. actor, but in this space, uh, I would be like a m movie commentator, you know, just something like that, like a pundit, you know, just kind of talking, commenting on shit. And, um, uh, but there, there, but there are certain people that have that expectation. Are you going to talk about this? Are you going to talk about that? And I say, no, cause this is sort of the channel and, and, uh, and they get disappointed, but you know, I mean, that's, that's, uh, I gotta be me because the second I start uh, talking about things I really have no interest in or doing vids I really don't want to do, then I'm not having fun anymore. And if I'm not right. having fun anymore, that's not good for anybody. It's not good for the viewers. If, if I, if it's just like, if I'm, if I come into the studio here and I'm like, oh, and I turn on the fucking thing and I go this, and I'm like, oh, that gotta... dude, that's what it was like for me when I was coming to yeah, the I end see? before you and I started, when you and I started, before we started doing this, I, that's what it was feeling like i was like oh, i gotta do another one of these fucking videos like, well, that's I it because you want to do it i had no need, desire to do it right you need to figure out something to talk about because again and i think too and i understand i i get the game i understand it right there's there's the algorithm game if you're if you don't post in a week like i did i haven't posted in a week well i posted 
yesterday, the, the It's Me Billy uh, promo. But in terms of content, like, you know, me, um, the last show I did was with you last week. Uh, so what, like seven, eight, n- nine days ago. Well, that's deadly to a channel. It is. I mean, if you're not posting at least once or twice a week, yeah, and it's so competitive and it's so, it stresses a lot of people out. You know, now if you're a gigantic channel, you know, and you're, you know, and you're up in the echelons, you, you of, can kind of get away with well, that. Yeah, it doesn't matter bit. because you also have a staff and you have a crew and you, right. you, you know, you have, I, I don't have a staff here. It's just me. It's just you. You know, we're a small, I mean, we're a big channel compared to some people, but we're a small channel in the big picture, you know, and, and so, you know, it's just one of those things where it's a hobby. We're having fun and, and we have to be having fun. And if we're not having fun and we're, and you know, I'm like, oh, Tony, yeah. So what do you want to talk about? You know, it's like, that's, that's not good. That's not good. No, uh, that's like sitcom season nine, you know, or season eight where it's like, what are we going to, that's why I said, you know, what we're doing right now definitely has a shelf life. Eventually you and I are going to be like, what else do we do? Maybe it will, it it might, you know, like, you know, doing the, the, the reaction videos to paranormal stuff. I'm not saying that will become our new thing, but because we're doing, we're exploring some ideas, maybe it might push a new show idea that it'll just evolve. We don't stop. It'll just evolve into something new and different, you know, because uh, I mean, how many times can we recycle the topics of yep. whatever about Halloween, you know? Yeah. Even well, and though, by the way, even though not- I know you, even though I know you've got, you know, followers who will talk about it till they're blue in the face. And yeah. I think that's great. But on the, on this side of the fence, man, it's like, again? well, yeah, well, yeah, no, no, no. And, and look, I mean, you know, and, and we're not saying, you know, we're at that point yet, but what's no, cool, no, no, what's no, no, cool no, no. is that I look at this and, and, you know, we've done, including today, we've done a hundred and seventy nine episodes that's and we average what two and a half, three hours a show. I mean, it's that's a lot. lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of discussions, a lot of, a lot of stuff. And we'd be higher if, if it wasn't for vacations and having to reschedule shows and schedule all that kind stuff. of stuff. Oh yeah. We'd probably right be now. over 300 right now. Um, but maybe even 350, you know, because there's a couple of times where we've had to take like a month off or, you know, what have you, but yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I get it, dude. I, I get it. And, and I just always politely say, listen, I, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I do. I love that you're supporting the channel. I think that's amazing, but I, I just, I can't do that. You know, I, I gotta be me. I gotta talk about what I want to talk about and hopefully you'll tune in because of me. I understand that there's going to be some topics you're not interested in. I get it. Totally understand that. But if you're a supporter of the channel hopefully you'll be that supporter of the channel you know and and not just tune in when we're talking halloween because there's lots of things we like to talk about on the channel which we find interesting if you're a yeah. horror fan then you should be tuning in when we're talking horror you know what i mean unless it's something you really aren't interested in you know but yeah no i get it dude i get I it know. super chat from oh hang on uh we got a super chat from chad powers who sends in five dollars says mcbride said they did the Corey story because they didn't think they'd have another chance to do another halloween film in this lifetime so they did it well i think that's simplifying sort of what he said i i think i know what you're talking about um i i wouldn't say that that is the sole reason why they did it um i would say that it was maybe they i think it was phrased more like you know more around the idea of taking not necessarily the Corey story in and of itself, but taking that kind of a risk, you know, doing something different. We're not going to have another chance to do something like this. So what are we going to do? Do we want to play it safe or do we want to add a little something, something that's a bit different here? And I think that's what he meant when he was talking about that. I don't think he had had the Corey story burning a, you know, a hole in his pocket for 10 years. And then it's like, oh yeah, yes, I need, you know what I mean? Because I don't think he knew he was going to do the Corey story four years ago when Halloween 18 came out or five years ago now. That's my opinion, of course. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. Uh, Edward Nito sends in $10. Says, Dave and Tony, thank you for broadcasting this show for us. I haven't been able to tune into every show. That's okay. Nevertheless, I'm grateful for the memories. It's been a hell of a ride, gentlemen. Cheers. Make it sound like we're ending. We're ending. We're not ending. Yeah, we're not ending. And not ending. Not ending time soon. But no, it, no, no, no. You know. Thanks. Thanks, though, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, we love doing this show. We love, you know, it's, it's a nice escape for us, too. You know, to be able to connect yep. and talk movies and and talk to you guys and and it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, all right, I think I got all the super chats. Did I get all the super chats? I think I, I have. 
So let's uh, get a few non-super ones here and see what people are saying. What are people saying? Let me scroll back here and see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Trying to find some ones that haven't seen before. <laughs> oh, wait, here's a super chat. Oh, no. No, I did get that super chat. Okay, I did get that one. I thought I didn't get that one. <laughs> Tom Ungurian says, Freddie Prince Jr. has an interview out there where he's talking about how bad the director from I Know What You Did Last Summer treated him, and he uh, and he told him every yeah, day saw, he didn't like him. I saw that recently. I saw that interview as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the same guy that directed... Um, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but there, there's... He's not the only one. There's the, 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 Oh, yeah. That probably right. happens more often on movie sets than people realize. Right. Just it just it's unfortunately it's the unfun side or not fun side to uh making a movie and what you know actors you know who are not clicking with a director and just it, it's unfortunate you know but well, man, that shit happens a lot that we don't hear about it's true and you know i mean it's look i mean you know directing is difficult and if you're not a good communicator you're not a good people person you don't know how to communicate a that vision to your crew and to your cast and how to direct actors it is a skill not everybody can be a director you can't just you know it's like it, it, it's like how some doctors just have really poor bedside manners right some doctors make you feel like and I'm not saying that the doctors that don't do this don't care. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there are some doctors and nurses, right? Professionals, some police officers, right. some, you know, whatever, right? People in positions of authority, which is what a director is, in a leadership role. When you are a director, you are a team leader. You are a manager. You are managing your team. Your team is your crew and your actors. You are the leader. And so you're the manager. You're the boss. And there's shitty bosses out there. There are just people that don't know how to manage. They don't know how to speak to their employees. They don't know how to give direction. They don't know how to communicate. They're not effective communicators. They might be great business minds, but they're not effective communicators. And and they and depending on their personality, they may get their fucking knickers in a twist when, you know, they, I don't know, the actors say, like, you know, when it comes to Billy, Bruce and I have been have been so collaborative with our actors. We want that. We want our actors to read a script and to give us suggestions for their characters. They will read the script and think, hmm, you know what? They're the actor. They're playing the role. Now, Bruce and I have final say. And if we're like, ah, I see what you're saying, but I would rather you still kind of handle it like this. Well, then they're going to handle it like that, right? But right. but being collaborative and, and, and doing a table read and, you know, uh, hearing what the actors have to say about their characters or suggestions of things. There's many times where we're like, oh, that's good. Yeah, you know what? Do that. Do that. Because it's the actor that's absorbing themselves in the role and in the character. And would my character do this? Would And who knows? Maybe, you know, Freddie was was like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll... And the actors... And you know what? And to be fair, some people are just fucking dicks. Some people are just fucking assholes. And there's no reason yep. for it. There's no justification for it. I don't give a frog's fat ass what happened to you when you were three or four. Maybe that's the reason you're a dick. But if you're 35, that's no excuse. There's no excuse. If you're seven, okay, you're seven. But if you're 35 and you have, you know, mommy issues from, you know, 1975, I don't care. When you're on a fucking set, you're a professional and you're not going to treat anybody like a fucking dick. You know what I mean? And so now, obviously, we only have one side of the story. You know, who knows? But I'm just saying, no, taking, but it's, taking, it's, it, at it, no, taking but, it at face value, taking it at face value. Uh, there are some people that don't know how to manage. They don't know how to direct. They don't know how to manage people. They're not good uh, communicators. They have poor bedside manners. So there's that side. And there's people that are just fucking assholes. No, I, I, I it, there, it's a prime reason why I work alone. I, I'm a solo act. Um, I don't, I know this. I openly admit it. I'm not a people person. I know yeah. that. Um, I don't sit there and talk to people. Um, you know, some people take offense to it and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, especially when I don't respond to messages or, or whatever. I just, 
I, I, and I know this about myself, which is why I choose the career that I chose, you know, something to where I can be independent. I don't need to work with a lot of people. It's just me, the agent. I got to show up, take the house or do a photo shoot for a company, whatever. And boom, be gone. You know what I mean? Um, it's why I don't go to conventions. Well, one, I just get social anxiety because I just, I can't be around a large mob of people, but what you're saying is very, very true about, you know, some people just can't work with other people and me knowing that. And that's great that I, you know that. Right. And I don't put myself in that position to, uh, uh, you know, to allow myself to, to deal or interact with, with, with anybody else. And just, I can take care of myself mm -hmm. and, and that's it. And it, it, me knowing that and acknowledging it. Um, yeah. I mean, Am I a dick? I guess by by the no, no, of like, no. Would you, would you? Well, no. I wouldn't but I mean, say like, that in, because in, in, I don't, I don't, I don't think you would be a dick unnecessarily just because you have a difficult. I, I think if you were in a professional environment working with people, you have the no, wherewithal. I would handle it right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm talking about yeah. people that are just fucking immature babies, you know, yeah. and and they're entitled, you know, and and yeah, it sounds like this director was like that, you know, self centered, just dick. You know, and, and it's like you, you can't treat your actors who are your employee. I mean, not exactly your, but you know, the dynamic, the dynamic is employee manager, you know, employee boss. You can't treat people like that. You can't, I mean, listen, and I know that people got away with that shit. Kubrick was difficult with people. There's a lot of things oh, that yeah, went on way back in the day. There's a lot of shit <laughs> oh, that yeah. would not go down today. And right. I don't so, think he could be a filmmaker in today's, today's movie making business because yeah, no, I don't think he could. He could be not not with because of how everything is on a, a timetable um, and how, you know, just how methodic he was with, you know, preparing a scene and shooting a scene over and over. I don't know how he would be in this day in, in modern day filmmaking. I right. really don't know. I don't right, you know. Right. Exactly. But, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Super chat comes in from Simon Mills, sends in five pounds. Thanks, Simon. Says the opening of Halloween four always puts me in the mood for Halloween. It it has that feel. Best opening, in my opinion, to get you going for Halloween. Agree. Uh, Agree. Uh, uh, yeah, agree. No, it's a great opening. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite opening, but it certainly is fantastic. I do agree with that. Uh, for sure. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate that. And then super chat from Ethan Sidel, uh, Sidelski, Sidelski, S S no, Sidles Sidelski, no, or Sidelski, Sidelski, S Sidelski. I'm probably butchering it. I'm trying I to phonetically sound good up. With names. Anyways, <laughs> love the videos, guys. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Ethan. Appreciate that. That I could say, Ethan. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, and it also says it is uh, Ethan's very first super chat. Very cool. Woo Thanks, man. Woohoo! Yahoo! <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So I do. Yeah. Okay. Now I know. I think I have all the super chats. I don't think I've missed any. I uh, got them. Good. 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 Uh, let me see here. Uh, scroll here. What else we got going on? Um, let me scroll back. If you see anything, just let me know. Anybody? This is your opportunity, guys. Get those questions in. Karen Langers uh, says, Halloween 4 shotgun kill, uh, or Kieran, I believe, actually. Uh, I think that's correct. Halloween 4 shotgun kill is my favorite. 4 to 6 and 4 is my second favorite. Like Tony, I grew up watching it. I, I grew up watching it as a seven-year-old for the first time. Uh, and rest in peace, a legends, uh, legends and condolences to George's family. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's sad, you know. Like I said, I mean, he or as Tony astutely pointed out, he's he's the the first to go, the first Myers. Well, no, actually, didn't didn't the Myers stunt guy die recently? Uh, Jim, which one, which Jim Wil Wilburn know. or whatever is the, sorry, the stunt guy, the guy that fell off the balcony at the end of, um, uh, at the end of part one, at the end of Halloween one, Jim Wilburn, I think his I name was or I, I thought that was Dick Warlock. So I don't know. Oh no, no wait, no. part one. In part one. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think know. he might, did he, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, uh, Michael Myers, Jim. He's, George P. Wilbur is the first name of the guys who have played Myers that are recognized as the character, you know, that has passed away. 
a guy who's in the movie for all of like 2.2 seconds. I don't even think it's that. Uh, yeah, I so, didn't even know that dude's name. <laughs> yeah, so back, you. back, back in, so technically he's not the first. Technically. Uh, this comes to us from iHorror from uh, November 22nd, 2022. So just a few months ago. Halloween stuntman for Michael Myers, James Winburn. James Winburn, dead at Well, 85. I mean, if we're going to get technical about it, Deborah Hill actually is the hands of Michael as a little kid. And she died for, <laughs> I mean, if we're going to get that technical and, and be nitpicky about it. Well, but right? I'm talking about somebody in the outfit, right? We actually well, did. she's well, in the always, clown costume. That's true. I mean, but and, and, and to be fair, all we did see was Jim Winburn's outfit ass when he fell so. towards the camera so but just saying because you know somebody out there is going to be in the in the comment right. section going um actually shut up shut up and go fucking bake cookies Public names because when, when when you mention the halloween movies like halloween nick castle halloween two, dick warlock halloween of course of course no 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 the main halloween the mains, five don, don, don shanks yes right? yes uh, that's right. halloween six george p again and uh i who, Seven is Chris Duran, Brad Lurie, yeah, Chris Duran. Tyler Maine, right. James Those Jim are the Gordon. main yes. guys who played Myers that everyone's recalling. But like, I agree. If we're going to get technical, like, well, you know. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. Like, like, like. Exactly. Exactly. No, I get it. Totally. Totally. Um, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, da, 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 da. Chester Franklin Jr. says, I love everyone in the chat room. I appreciate the prayers and condolences for me and my family. So thanks. I'm doing good now. Great to hear, Chester. Great to hear. Uh, Marshall McRae. Hey, I like that name, Marshall. Marshall McRae says, I loved my Viking beard uh, at some point of time now, I'm all shaven. Gives an inspiration to grow it back. However, the maintenance of it is... <laughs> I don't know where this conversation was coming from. But you know what I say? Grow I love that my, Viking beard. I love beard. my beard. Yes. I yeah, well, Tony's... Beard. Yeah, Tony's got a hell of a beard going on. I say, uh, Marshall, uh, grow that Viking beard back. Grow that Viking beard back. Super chat from Zach Talk sends in four ninety nine. Thank you, Zach. Says, hey, Dave and Tony, what do y'all think about the Friday the 13th movie trying to be made and how will it affect the Crystal Lake uh, series on Peacock? So yeah, Tony, you've heard about that, obviously. There's the Crystal Lake series on Peacock. We talked about it here on the channel. And right. Sean Cunningham, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, it was announced, announced that Sean Cunningham yeah. is uh, in er early development on wanting to make a sequel to the original Friday the 13th. And what that means, and, and I think he even wants to do something with the original House, I think, uh, which I love that movie. Um, so I'm not... I don't think there's any details yet of what exactly that, that means and how that's going to affect. I don't think the, I think the universes will be separate. It's a strange timing, you know, it, it, it almost feels like, uh, okay, well, uh, Victor Miller is going to go off and do the fucking TV show. I'm going to have to do a fucking movie. You know, it, it feels like these two are just continuing to punch each other in the face. It's like, grow up, you old fuck. Yeah, farts. It's, it's, like, it's like high school drama bullshit, you it know? It feels it's like, like whatever. That. Just make us good shit to enjoy. Yeah. How about that? No, it that? does. It you does. Know? It just feels like that because of the timing. So we get the Crystal Lake announcement and, and a couple is late, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to go do a movie. It's like, oh, fuck. I don't know. I, 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 I don't have I, enough information I, to really have a feeling yet. That, I don't have enough information. I don't know what... Cunningham's planning to do, but I will say at the moment, if I had to, I'm probably more excited for the Peacock series because there's so much they can explore with it. It seems like they're not binding themselves to the uh, original franchise, right? What I'm gathering. I mean, that's what it seems like. So if that's the case and the door is open for them to do whatever they want, get creative, do new shit. So I'm a little, cause I, I got a feeling with Cunningham and this is just not a dis this is not a disrespect to him at all. Um, is that he'll play it safe and give us the hits and, you know, connect it to whatever and you know stuff that we've already seen, you know, being just a typical Friday yeah. the 13th movie with the Peacock series and they're, they're, the layout is for four seasons, which, okay, that's great. So hopefully you're, you're giving us good shit that you know, in four seasons is a, is a, is a safe, is a safe play. Yeah. Um, you know, I've said, I've said this many times. That could be like 40 Cobra episodes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like, you know, for example, I love the karate kid. That is my movie. Cobra Kai. 
I'm looking forward to the final season. We're de- it's definitely time um, to 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 you know, but they could have already closed this out last year uh, and ended off on, in the fifth season, and and that's it. Right. Um, it, but it hasn't overstayed its welcome either. So your your Cobra Kai is like kind of on the line. It's not quite too much like Stranger Things. This is it, you know. Again, not of course with Stranger Things, with the time gap between seasons to seasons, um, that's uh, that's been the, the the frustrating thing. But it hasn't overstayed its welcome, and it's time for that to come to an end as well. Too Friday the Thirteenth series, same thing. If they, if they if their foreshadowing is four seasons, that's good. That's a safe play. It's not overstaying your welcome. And like I said, because they're not connecting to anything to the original franchise. Man, they got they got so much room to play with, and I hope they I hope they take advantage of that and just create new shit and give us new. I don't care if it's giving us new lore. I that I don't care about because you're not. It's not connected to, but enough new lore that you you, you there's moments of like Easter eggs that maybe call back to what fans might not like. Oh, I know what you did there. I see what you did. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that, but while giving us new shit to work with because that's going to be fun to. Isn't that coming out in October? Uh, the Crystal Lake series? Yeah. Yeah, I, b- I believe so. so I, that's, I think so. That's going to be, you know, that's going to be fun to Probably talk around about Friday the 13th. Because there's a Friday right. the 13th in October. Friday the 13th in October. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and I don't know if they're going to do a like release once a week or if they're going to do it all in one know. drop. Um, I'm kind of torn. Do you do it all in one drop like they typically do or do you do it once a week? I, you know, it all depends on like, what is this like? a? Cause if you do it as a 10 episode thing, I mean, you're running right into new year. So I yeah. probably going to, I would say that they would drop it all in one shot. So that'll be fun to, to talk about. And for sure, yeah, Cunningham, I don't know, man, like, well, where's I he going to go with it? I just don't, it just feels like a spite move, you know, like right. the and like, timing with feels that very move, weird. What are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? No like, idea. Where are you going to go? No At idea. At least with Crystal Lake, we know we've got something new. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian says October, 2023. I think so. I mean, I don't think it would be October 20 because I think they're, they're going to start shooting it very soon, you know, and, and uh, you can shoot. Oh, I mean, uh, let's say they start shooting in, you know, I don't know, March, April, or maybe not. Maybe they start yeah. shooting in the, I mean, maybe it won't, maybe it won't be October, but I, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, um, We'll see. I mean, it's Friday the 13th. It's not a heavy visual effects film like Stranger Things no. where you could spend an entire year on post-production. You know, I right. mean, let's not forget they shot Halloween 18 in January and released it. Well, it, I mean, why they released it in in um, uh, October, but I saw it at TIFF in September. So, I mean, so. you know, I mean, it's, you know, yeah. A Crystal Lake series, you know, and Adrian King is back. Now she's not playing Alice. But she's got a role, a reoccurring role. Which is fine cool. because it works for this new canon that they're creating. You it know, does, and maybe yeah. Amy Steele, you know, maybe my girl might come back. You know, maybe. Not, she won't be her original character, obviously. No. But, um, you know, maybe she'll make an appearance as well, too, which will be cool. Um, of the OGs from the original run, those two... I, I hope they don't like overdo it. You know what I mean? Right. Like oversaturate, like, well, now we're going to read this, but you know what I mean? Like if they brought those two, that's more than enough. Yes. You know what I mean? But if you start bringing in like, and it becomes oversaturated, it's just like, yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. Unless Kevin Bacon wanted to do it, then I mean, it's Kevin Bacon. So that, well, yeah, that but he, but he maybe can't, maybe he might. Well, but he can't play the original guy. Well, no, he's dead anyway. He's dead anyway. But yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if he, but if they wanted to bring him back, that right. would be like the one additional exception to Adrian King would be Adrian King and Amy Steele. Right. And if Kevin Bacon said, hey, guys, I'm interested, then, okay, that's, it's it's different because it's him. Right, right. But I got you. Yeah, but please, God, don't oversaturate that with like callbacks to these different actors who play. No, different- no, God, please no. <laughs> oh, Darth Vader Jones sends in five dollars. Says, "Hey guys, Halloween ends has hurt my Michael Myers fandom. Now I feel as I think you once said, Dave, the original Halloween should have been the only one." Well, well, first of all, uh, my condolences to your Halloween fandom. Um, I I understand. I mean, you're you're not the only one that feels that way, and it definitely. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, I. It, it's not the movie. I. It's not the movie. It should have been, in in my opinion. Um, but it is what it is. It's it's out there now, and and um, I've I've always said that I just think the character of Michael works best as a one off character. Now you can stretch him over a few sequels. You can do that for sure. 
Um, but because of the foundation for which the character was created, he has, as I always say, there's a shelf life. And, uh, you know, because the more it's, the more movies you make with the character, even if you're rebooting it, right, and you're telling it again, the more you keep making movies with this character, the more difficult and difficult and difficult it is to keep the, the foundation of the character intact, which is the ambiguity, the mystery, and the mystique. We can't know anything about yeah. him. And, you know, it's not like Freddy. We know who Freddy is. We know why he's doing what he's doing. We knew that in the first fucking movie. We know who Jason is. We, we, we know why he's doing what he's doing. He's coming back to avenge his mother. We know every, they, we know their backstories. We know, you know, where they come from. We know everything. But with Michael, it's, com it's a completely different foundation, the fundamental foundation of the inception and the creation of the character. So that character, its sole existence and, and, and what, what makes the character work so well is the fact that we know nothing about him, the mystique, the mystery, all that. And you can't carry that for 13 movies. I mean, you just can't do it. It's it, true. It, it runs thin and, and, you know, you're trying to figure out ways to keep it intact and oh well, well, we'll just remake it. How about we reboot it again? You know, and it's like, how about we don't? Now, again, I'm speaking from a fan artistic perspective, from the box office perspective, from the studio perspective, from the money perspective, they'll reboot it as many fucking times as you go see it but uh because it's it's show business but uh but from the other side yeah it's the it michael works best like in his prime it's best in one movie and he's solid in like halloween one and two you know what i mean like that's kind of a nice double punch even though we do get motive and the sister thing and all that is brought in. But why did John Carpenter feel the need to do that? Why did he even feel the need to write something like that? He regrets it now, but why did he even feel the need to do that? Because he's making a sequel. And because, well, if I'm making mm -hmm. a sequel, I can't just do the same fucking thing over again. So I now I have this character that's built around anonymity and mystique and ambiguity and, you know, all that. But how am I going to, how do, like, uh, sister, brother, I guess. That, and then, you know. yeah, you got to you gotta shoehorn in the most dumbest idea in this whole franchise, which is making them siblings. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, you got to do a ton of that stuff. Now, uh, yeah. uh, so it, it's, it's. I don't think all the sequels are bad. I don't think that. I think I, I like I like four. You know, five. Like I've always said, five was the one that destroyed the franchise. Now somebody has tried to argue with me in the past and say, but but Halloween two technically just. I'm um, yes, Halloween two was the beginning of it becoming a franchise. But Halloween it wasn't a franchise yet. So Halloween two didn't yeah. destroy the franchise because Halloween two is the inception of the franchise. Halloween 2 was the beginning of in, including motive and, and, and sort of the beginning of, of erasing that mystique. But you still, but two was still liked and four was liked, you know, generally speaking, when you get to five, that's the one that I say destroys the franchise. And I say that because every, every decision that was made after that is all because of what happened with five. So because of five, because they didn't know who the man in black was because of that, you got six and because of six, you, they rebooted and got H2O and because of H2O, you get resurrection and because of resurrection you get another reboot because it was awful and it didn't you get rob zombies halloween one okay now, but because of and then you get halloween two and then because of rob zombies halloween two then they reboot it and then you get Halloween. you can see it all goes back to five if five had been great or even just good as good as four no weird man in black thing no weird uncle no no, no, no it was just it was like four, but a bit different. It was like a decent sequel. It was to a four. decent you know, not sequel. great, you know, but it, it was like yeah. your yeah. It, it, it was like your scream. Like I'm going to say this, even like a scream three. Now I say scream right. three, even though scream three is looked at as the 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 quote unquote the shittiest one in the franchise. But if scream three and and look, I agree. I think it's the weakest out of them all. But if scream three is your weakest one. That's pretty good. That's a pretty. That's a pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not like if you're comparing Scream Three to Halloween Five, I'll take Scream Three. Right. You know what I mean. Right. And so that's why I'm saying like the Scream franchise hasn't had their Halloween Five yet. They haven't had their Resurrection yet. They haven't had the Rob Zombies Halloween Two yet. Right. They haven't had that yet. And so that's what I mean by that is that if Five had even had been like a three, it's like oh you know I think Four was better, but Five was all right. Now, listen, I'm speaking as somebody who doesn't like five. If you like five, that's great. 
That's, that's amazing. I celebrate that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just talking about my thoughts on it, okay? You're free to disagree, of course. But in my opinion, had if five had been just, that ah, was pretty good, you know, not as good as four, but it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It was, it was all right. Then we probably wouldn't have gotten six. And we might not have, you know what I mean? We Or a different six. It would have been a different six, maybe. You know what I mean? So that's why I say that you can, you, you can paint it all the way back, a line all the way back to five. Five is where it went off the rails, you know, the franchise went off the rails. But yes, you can say that the sheer existence of Halloween 2 uh, is the beginning of destroying the mystique. Yes, yeah, you can, for sure. Yes, sir. Anyway, <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox right. now. Um, uh, Death Ray! I can't see it. Why not? Where are my glasses? I should make this bigger. That's part of the problem, too. I have it smaller. Anyway, Death Ray, you know who you are. Uh, 279 says, a classic bloody, uh, uh, a classic, a classic My Bloody Valentine 1981. Yes, totally, dude. I agree with that. I agree with that. It is. Uh, where Nomad has gone before sends in a very generous chat of $20. Did I miss a super chat from you earlier? I think I did. Yes, I did. Back here, you sent in a super chat uh that said it was two dollars thank you very much and you said when i met george wilbur he was a great guy you met him with your daughter that's very cool man very awesome very cool. yeah i've heard great things great things and then you follow up with um hey tony amy Steele, did you see hey tony amy Steele, did you see walk like a man was amy Steele in a movie uh, called walk like a man maybe I'm not sure. What, I did not. I and thank you for the very generous the, super chat. The, the the only other Amy Steele movie that I know is obviously is April Fools. That's that's the only one um, that I know of. Anyways, I mean, I know she made a, a guest appearance in an episode of Home Improvement, um, which caught me off guard when I saw that because I I mean I watched Home Improvement enough, but never really paid that close attention. And then there was an episode I was like, oh shit, it's Amy Steele. Mm, um, yes. You know, shorter hair. I think it was darker too, um, if I remember correctly. But no, have not seen Walk Like a Man. Isn't Robert Downey Jr. in that? I believe. I don't know. You might be right. I don't know. I'm not sure. It could be. I don't know. Not sure. Uh, Sebastian sends in a dollar ninety nine and says, "Is it coming out October twenty October 2023. I can't talk today. Uh, I'm not sure. It makes sense to me because there's a Friday the 13th in October, so it makes sense, but I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if they've officially announced that or not. Maybe they have. I'm not sure. Uh, and then Peace Guys got, I think that means homework, maybe. Got homework, a little pad with a pencil. I'm not down with the lingo of emojis. I don't know. But hey. But I, I will. I'm I will. Old. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Death Ray follows up <laughs> with 279 and says, Halloween 18 made a mistake. Michael was caught. Yeah, you could say that, that, um, but I, but because they were going, they were trying, because Halloween 2 was erased, you see, from 1981, um, it was the right thing to do. And I say that had Halloween 2 been canon, then I think he could have just walked off into the ether and disappeared. But, mm. uh, potentially. But, you know, they were trying to go back to, to, to ground the film more. You can't do what H2O did. Now, I'm not saying there isn't an answer for, for what I'm about to say, but you can't do what H2O did in the sense of he's gone for 20 years, they never found his body, you know, that line right you know, in the film. And they, they it's, it's a throwaway line. They draw no attention to it. Michael just shows up 20 years later. He's not burned at all. He can see no problem. His eyes are completely intact. His skin looks like he's been using oil volet 38 times a day. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there's no burn marks. It's, it, it, there, there's right. no, like, you can't do, I mean, you can do that because they did do that and nobody seems to give a shit um but for somebody like me i'd be like yeah, yeah you can't do that like you, you have to acknowledge it if you want to ground the movie more and and more realistic then you can't have him just missing for 20 years or you can't you can't have him missing for 20 years just to show up and he's still in the jumpsuit and the mask it's like well, where has he been? How has he been eating? How has he been shitting, pissing, you know, working? I mean, where has he been? Like, to do what they did in Ends where he's been, you know, missing for a year, okay, 20 years? 
you know, or, or yeah. no, excuse me, 40 years. That would have been 40 years because we're talking 78 to Halloween 18, 40 years. He's just blending in for four, a year. Okay. 40. No, not buying it. Not buying it. So they, they need, they needed to do something. Now I'm not saying that they couldn't have figured it out, but you can't just take the lazy way out and say, they never found his body. And he just shows up 40 years later. Oh, there he is. Huh? He's been a Walmart greeter. Um, Edward Nito sends in $5. Thanks, Edward. And says, do you have a preference on theater seating? When I was younger, I always sat in the back. Now I like to sit in row D or E. Well, Tony doesn't like to go to the theater at all. Yeah, I don't go but to the theater when you, anymore. But when you did go to the theater, where where did you sit? Um, I guess it depends. Um, a little bit more towards the back. Um, sometimes the back, depending on, so so like towards the end, I would, you know, go to like the morning showings to watch the, Mm. to watch a movie because less people in there. Right. Uh, and not dealing with the stupid shit. Uh, but even then, you, you know, even, even then in the 10, 30, 11 o'clock showings, the first showing of the day, you still end up getting idiots in there. And it's just like, I'm done. I'm not going to be spending all this money to watch a movie, um and deal with idiots in the theater but back in the day when i was younger um yeah i think we sat more in the back um of the theater Mm -hmm. from what i remember cool cool yeah i used to um bruce and i when we were teenagers this was before uh you know the big multiplexes we have now um right we used to sit in the front row Sometimes, like I saw Golden Eye in the front row. I saw uh, Congo. I, I, I'm not sure if you remember that movie from 1995. Congo. I saw that in the front row. Um, it's just you know you're a teenage. That's when like THX surround sound was like first making its way into the theaters. At, at least where we were. I mean, maybe it wasn't the first. Maybe I don't know it's been around since the 80s. I'm not sure, but but it was like it, it was like a new thing. You could hear it all around. You. It was really cool. Then of course, the older you get, you're like, yeah, I can't sit in the front row anymore. So I usually sit like in the you know how there's the bottom kind of bowl and then there's the upper bowl. Uh, I sit in the upper bowl like kind of probably where you you are Edward, like D or E, you know, C, D, E, F, G, like somewhere in there, try to get a middle seat if I can, um, you know, but they're usually always taken. Uh, Taylor Paulson sends in a very generous super chat of $20. Thank you, Taylor. And says, I've been a long time listener, but just started super chatting it up. Well, welcome my man. Uh, when I listen to two dudes, it's like chilling with some good friends. Not a lot of my friends are into horror. So it's fun for me to listen to rest in peace, George P. Wilbur. Well, thank you, Taylor, for saying that man. And we get it. Tony and I get it. Tony and I get it. Dude, That's what it was like. Imagine now, now imagine that growing up that's what it was like and not having social media and i had a couple friends that i yeah. could but not 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 like this n- yeah. n- n- not to this extent um you know, yeah i could talk about it with my brother and whatnot but you were pretty much on your own you know um, it's true we weren't talking we weren't talking about these movies like we are uh today in the way we dissect them so um, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, totally. Very much so. hundred percent, hundred percent, man. And, and, uh, you know, you just gotta, yeah, you just, you just gotta, you'll find them though. You know, you'll meet somebody you'll, and, and, and today it's, it's, it's easier to connect with people. Well, it's easier in certain ways, you know, to connect with people who do share that. I mean, there's all, there's YouTube channels, right? There's Facebook pages yep. there's social media. And I mean, back in our day, you know, back, you know, in the eighties and, and the nineties, I mean, didn't exist at all. And, and, um, no. you know, I remember I, I had certain friends, Bruce included. Now, Bruce appreciates horror movies, but it's certainly not his favorite genre. Bruce's favorite genre. Well, yeah, I, I, he doesn't hate it or anything. I mean, obviously he's making a horror movie, you know, with me, but, but, um, he appreciates it. He likes it. Uh, he's not so much into the, well, his, his favorite growing up was Freddie. Um, and so he appreciates it, but his, his favorite genre is science fiction. And, um, but yeah, I mean, certainly I, I was the one that was talking to Bruce about horror. And then there was my friend, Brian, who I remember talking to about it and he would humor me and, you know, whatever. And, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I was sort of out there on an Island a little bit too. A lot of people who are into horror are because horror is 
niche. I mean, it's 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 one of the more niche genres, right? You know, I mean, there are horror yeah. conventions. There aren't drama conventions. You know, it's not like there's action adventure conventions. You know, I mean, usually that's just Comic Con. You know, it's just a general pop culture thing. But horror has its own conventions. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's crazy, a, huh? Yeah, it's a very sort of niche kind of kind of thing. Although. It's less niche now that I think it's ever been. Chris Baber sends in four ninety nine. Says says, Tony rocking the adult film star beard that would make Frank <laughs> Riker go. jealous. That's true. Yeah, Frank. Frank, that's right. Frank, I don't know. Frank's got a pretty solid beard, though. Frank does have a solid beard. Yes. Yeah. Frank does have a solid beard. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we're coming up to two hours. I think we've uh, we've done well tonight. Uh, you want to want to pack it in? Sounds good. All right, folks, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for episode 179 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Thank you to our great moderators, Frank Riker, Tabitha Short, Darren Sands, Chris Baber, Cody Snyder, and Andrew Stevens for doing what you do. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the Super Chat questions that came in today, of course, as well. Those non-Super Chat ones we, we were able to get to. We really appreciate it. If you're watching after the fact, or if you're watching now, jump into the comment section below once this thing is, uh, once we're done here, and tell Tony and I your favorite thoughts on George P. Wilbur, the legendary Michael Myers actor from Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, Halloween 6, The Revenge of, uh, excuse me, The Curse of Michael Myers, Curse. Uh, and let us Curse. know your thoughts, your memories uh, on good old George P. Wilbur. Rest in peace, George. Rest easy. You are a horror Halloween icon. Thanks for icon. the memories. Thanks for the memories. Yes, thanks for the memories, George. We'll see you Monday night, folks. Take care. Talk soon. Cheers.